The story unfolds on a quiet night, with police officer Jeffrey on duty. Two young men, Ryan and Kevin, approach him. It turns out that Officer Jeffrey instructs Ryan to rob a store, handing over a map with the location. Ryan, being a lock expert, easily enters the store without any trouble. He then proceeds to break into a hidden safe behind a wall. Successfully opening it, they find it filled with a large sum of money. However, there's a motion sensor alarm inside the safe, and the police are immediately alerted to the robbery, leading to an arrest order. Jeffrey promptly follows the order, ensuring he is the first to arrive at the scene. Upon his arrival, Jeffrey fires two shots at his own car. Kevin, who exits the store first, is puzzled by Jeffrey's actions, but moments later, Jeffrey shoots him, killing him instantly. Next, he places the gun used to shoot his own car next to Kevin's lifeless body. This makes it appear as if Kevin had shot Jeffrey first, giving Jeffrey a reason to eliminate Kevin in self-defense. When Ryan comes out, he's furious and curses the police officer. However, Jeffrey remains unfazed, pointing his gun at Ryan as he approaches, threatening harm to Ryan's child and wife if he dares to speak up. Reluctantly, Ryan is forced to stay silent to ensure the safety of his family, accepting all the accusations against him. Ten years had passed, and Ryan had completed his prison sentence. On his day of release, waiting outside the gate, his old friend Frank greeted him with words of encouragement. Frank offered Ryan his old job as a lock expert, but Ryan hesitated. He was now a former criminal, and his locksmith license had been taken away. However, Frank insisted on taking him to his locksmith repair shop, where everything was prepared, even a car for transportation and some pocket money. With all these offers, Ryan couldn't refuse and reluctantly accepted the job from his good friend. In the past, Ryan had been an expert at breaking locks and safes, but this time, he intended to use his skills for legal work. Later, Ryan called his wife, from whom he had been separated for 10 years. He invited her and their daughter to meet at a cafe they used to frequent. His wife, Kate, a female detective, and her daughter, Lindsay, joined him. To allow for a private conversation, Kate briefly took Lindsay away and asked her to order food and drinks. With the opportunity to speak, Ryan immediately apologized for his past mistakes, but still kept the true facts about Kevin's death a secret. Kate forgave him, giving him a chance to connect with their daughter. However, when it came to their relationship, Kate wasn't ready to let him back into their lives. For Ryan, being able to bond with his daughter was a significant improvement, and he hoped to persuade Kate in the future. That night at the workshop, Frank offered Ryan some valuable advice. He encouraged Ryan to prioritize his feelings for his child and wife. Despite being in prison, they had accepted him back into their lives, which was a stroke of luck. Frank emphasized that Ryan should not disappoint their trust again and should avoid repeating past mistakes. Making his family his top priority was crucial. The next morning, Frank woke up Ryan, reminding him that it was time to start working. With renewed enthusiasm, Ryan began repairing a lock in a luxurious residence. After completing the job, the homeowner, Garrett, approached him. Garrett mentioned that one of his employees, April, had informed him about Ryan's expertise in breaking locks and safes. Garrett tried to convince Ryan to work for him in potentially illegal activities. However, Ryan immediately declined any job involving criminal activities since his current work focused on legitimate repairs. When he returned to the workshop, he found April waiting for him. She revealed that she was Kevin's sister. April shared her struggles since Kevin's death including working as an escort and facing financial difficulties, and she needed a large sum of money. Ryan agreed to help April, but he emphasized that he would only assist with legal endeavors, refusing to engage in criminal acts. April became angry and left. Frank, who had overheard their conversation, advised Ryan not to give in to April's request. He reminded Ryan that there were other ways to repay the debt, despite the guilt he might feel. The next day, as Ryan was preparing to go to work, a police car pulled up, signaling him to stop. To his surprise, it was Jeffrey, the corrupt police officer, who had ordered him to commit robbery. Jeffrey had come to threaten Ryan, ensuring he wouldn't reveal Jeffrey's criminal activities. Jeffrey was nearing retirement, but still had two of his subordinates, 
Detective Perez, and Detective Jones, keeping an eye on Ryan. After Jeffrey's departure, Detective Jones delivered a warning by physically assaulting Ryan. Unfortunately, Detective Perez discovered a set of burglary tools, commonly used by criminals to break into doors. This led to Ryan being taken to the police station. Thankfully, their superiors recognized that the evidence was insufficient to imprison Ryan again. Without direct evidence linking Ryan to breaking into someone else's door, the case against him couldn't stand. Inside the interrogation room, Ryan faced questions from his own wife, who wondered why he had become involved in criminal activities. Ryan explained that it was all orchestrated by Jeffrey, who had approached and searched his car. The set of burglary tools actually belonged to Frank and had been in Ryan's car since the beginning. Soon after, their superior came out, clearing Ryan of the accusation. However, it was pointed out that working as a locksmith without a license was still illegal. Ryan was instructed to obtain the necessary permit before resuming his work. After returning to the workshop, Frank offered Ryan some advice on avoiding trouble whenever possible. But trouble had a way of finding Ryan when he least expected it. Meanwhile, at the police station, Jeffrey's retirement party was underway. He delivered a speech that painted him as a hero and then invited Kate into his office, offering her a glass of wine and suggesting that she take over his position as department head. Jeffrey's intention wanted Kate to keep an eye on Ryan, serving as his watchdog and discouraging Ryan from challenging him. On the other hand, Ryan testing his lock-picking skills, and he is still worthy of being called an expert. Out of the blue, Kate called and asked Ryan to pick up their daughter, Lindsay, from school as she was attending a party. Ryan was excited to reunite with his daughter and wasted no time picking up Lindsay from school. He then took her to the park for lunch. Lindsay was eager and curious, asking her father about his lock-picking skills and even requesting a demonstration. Not wanting to disappoint his daughter, Ryan took Lindsay to the workshop and showed her some lock-picking tricks. Surprisingly, Lindsay succeeded on her very first try. That evening, Ryan dropped Lindsay off at the party where Kate was attending. As it turned out to be Jeffrey's retirement party, Kate mentioned that she had been chosen to replace Jeffrey as the department head, alongside Detective Perez and Detective Jones. Despite his frustration, Ryan had to put on a smile in front of Kate. Shortly after, Jeffrey appeared and greeted Ryan with a warning. Ryan stayed silent, closed the car door, and drove away. When he returned to the workshop, April was waiting for him. She once again shared her troubles with her boss, Garrett, a wealthy real estate boss who forced her serving him, treating her like an object for his business associates. April showed Ryan her bruises, the result of being mistreated by a psychopathic customer. She explained that escaping wasn't an option because she would be caught and forced to serve another dangerous individual. April needed a large sum of money to escape her current life. Unable to bear seeing her suffering, Ryan finally agreed to help her. The next day, April showed Ryan the location of Garrett's residence. Tomorrow night, Garrett would host a casino party, and Ryan needed to infiltrate his office when everyone was off guard. Meanwhile, at the police station, Kate, now the department head, discovered files related to escorts that had not been properly dealt with. She suspected that Jeffrey had not been fulfilling his duties correctly. In the evening, Garrett's party at his house had begun. The guest list included prominent figures from his business, like entrepreneurs, government officials, and even some police officers. Ryan, concealed behind a mask, began his operation by sneaking in through the back door. Inside, April spotted Ryan successfully infiltrating and promptly caused a distraction by bumping into a drink server. This diverted everyone's attention, allowing Ryan to make his way towards Garrett's office. However, Jeffrey was also in attendance at the party, and upon seeing Ryan, he followed him discreetly. Inside the office, Ryan was fortunate to find a bag filled with money on the table, saving him from having to crack the safe. Jeffrey entered the room just then, and Ryan swiftly moved to attack, wresting Jeffrey's gun from him, ready to fire. But Ryan couldn't take such a risk because there were numerous people at the party, some of them police officers. Killing Jeffrey, there would be like surrendering himself. So, Ryan chose to leave, taking one bag of money from the table. However, his escape didn't go as smoothly as he hoped. 
Some guards spotted him, and Ryan dashed into the middle of the party, using April as a shield. Once he reached the door, Ryan pushed April forward and leaped over a wall. The Hest was a success, and Ryan managed to escape. Meanwhile, Garrett was furious with Jeffrey, who was supposed to secure the party. But he had allowed the thief to escape with one of his bags of money regardless, Jeffrey was determined to find the thief and recover the stolen cash. Back at the workshop, Ryan concealed the stolen money inside Frank's safe and tried calling April, but she didn't answer. Worried, Ryan went to April's house, only to find it in disarray. April had vanished without a trace, as if she had been abducted by someone. At Kate's house, she received a female guest named Tania, who happened to be April's co-worker. Tania had come to deliver a flash drive containing substantial evidence of Garrett's crimes, implicating not only him but also Jeffrey, Detective Perez, and Detective Jones in their unlawful activities. The flash drive held numerous photos and videos documenting their criminal actions. Later, when Ryan returned home, he was taken aback by Frank's furious reaction upon discovering all the money inside his safe. Ryan quickly explained that he had no choice as he couldn't stand idly by while April was being tormented. Frank, not wanting to interfere further, advised Ryan to inform Kate. However, Ryan refused, fearing that involving Kate would prompt Jeffrey to take action, possibly ordering Detective Perez and Detective Jones to harm her. In the end, Frank remained silent, leaving Ryan to deal with his own problems. Shortly after, as Ryan was rearranging the stolen money in the bag, Kate approached him. Ryan hurriedly concealed the money. Kate had come to ask Ryan about the real story behind April's situation. She also wanted him to honestly reveal the reason for his imprisonment 10 years ago. However, once again, Ryan chose to shoulder all the blame himself and kept April's whereabouts a secret. Back at the office, Kate assembled all the evidence into an envelope and handed it over to her superiors. However, they realized that they still lacked a crucial witness. To ensure that the corrupt police officers faced severe consequences, they needed another person to testify. Tania's status as an escort might raise doubts in court, so Kate had to find an additional witness. That night, Ryan made his way back to Garrett's house, managing to slip past the guards without detection. He had a proposal. If Garrett released April, he would return all the stolen money. Garrett claimed he had no knowledge of April's whereabouts, but Ryan was convinced Garrett was behind her disappearance. In frustration, Garrett attacked Ryan, but Ryan fought back until Garrett was helpless. Desperate, Ryan submerged Garrett's head in water, demanding to know where April was. Unable to endure the torture, Garrett eventually admitted that April was in Jeffrey's hands. Upon learning this, Ryan rushed to rescue April. However, from a distance, it seemed like April was with Jeffrey, watching Ryan's departure. In reality, April and Jeffrey were working together, setting a trap for Ryan. April's plea for help had been a lie to manipulate Ryan into committing the robbery. She sought revenge for Kevin's death and aimed to frame Ryan for the crime. Later, Jeffrey entered Garrett's house wearing gloves to eliminate Garrett and shift all blame onto Ryan. Not long after, Ryan returned to the workshop and informed Frank that Garrett had no information about April's location as the true kidnapper was Jeffrey. However, Frank advised Ryan to hand over all the stolen money to Kate, letting her handle the April situation. Ryan's actions had made things worse, and without legal assistance, he risked going back to jail. Shortly after, Kate arrived at the workshop with Lindsay. She admitted that she knew the truth about Ryan's lies. With no other option, Ryan had to be honest with Kate. On that night, Kevin had been unarmed, and Jeffrey intentionally killed him, planting a weapon next to his body. Ryan had to keep silent because Jeffrey had threatened to harm Kate and Lindsay. As a devoted wife, Kate couldn't let her husband face this alone. She asked Ryan to give her the stolen money intending to resolve everything through legal means, while Ryan stayed at the workshop with Frank to ensure Lindsay's safety. Meanwhile, Detective Perez and Detective Jones had broken into their superior's office, finding the flash drive containing crucial evidence hidden in the drawer. They immediately accessed the files and realized it was not just ordinary evidence. 
Alongside photos, there were videos and audio recordings. If all this evidence reached the court, and they had live witnesses to testify, their punishment would be severe, possibly even facing the death penalty. Elsewhere, Jeffrey and April had checked into a hotel. Jeffrey received a call from Jones, informing him that their superior had discovered their crimes through the flash drive evidence provided by Kate. Jeffrey was furious, despite recovering the evidence. Their superior was already aware. That night, their plan was to eliminate Kate, Ryan, and anyone else involved, retrieve the stolen money, and escape the city. Upon hearing Jeffrey's intentions, April regretted their earlier agreement to only frame Ryan and eliminate Garrett. She now threatened Ryan to exchange the money with her. However, Jeffrey had sinister plans to kill Ryan and his family. April began to feel remorse for her actions, knowing that an innocent life might be endangered because of her choices. Back at the workshop, Ryan received a call from April, urgently telling him to leave. However, it was already too late. Perez appeared and shot Ryan in the leg. Frank tried to help by shooting from a distance, managing to eliminate Jones. Unfortunately, Perez's bullet hit Frank, and he died instantly. Holding Lindsay as a shield, Perez demanded that Ryan hand over the money. However, Kate had already taken the money. Ryan had no choice but to persuade Perez while putting down his weapon. On the road, Kate, upon hearing reports of the shooting at the workshop, immediately turned back. Unfortunately, she arrived too late as Lindsay had been taken hostage by Perez. Shortly after, Jeffrey called, demanding that Ryan deliver the money in exchange for Lindsay's safety. This time, Ryan asked Kate to assist. Kate would go to rescue Lindsay while Ryan would meet Jeffrey at the designated location and hand over the money. At the same time, Perez arrived at the hotel, bringing Lindsay with him and taking her into April's room, where he handcuffed her. At the designated location, Jeffrey welcomed Ryan with his weapon, demanding to see the money immediately. Ryan tried to buy some time, asking Jeffrey to release Lindsay while he placed the money on the car. However, Jeffrey insisted that Ryan toss his pistol once again. With his daughter's safety in jeopardy, Ryan didn't protest and threw his gun far away. Meanwhile, in the hotel room, Perez came out to check on the situation, calling for April. However, April was nowhere to be found. Inside the room, Lindsay attempted to unlock the handcuffs on her hands, using techniques her father had taught her. Eventually, she succeeded and quietly slipped out heading towards the door. She sprinted down the stairs as soon as she had the chance. At the same time, Kate, who had infiltrated the scene successfully, was waiting under the stairs. With quick reflexes, she shot Perez dead. Without wasting time, Kate brought Lindsay to the car and locked her inside, instructing her not to let anyone in except her parents. Back at the meeting point, Ryan could only surrender, raising his hands. Jeffrey, who had the money, prepared to pull the trigger and end Ryan's life. Unexpectedly, April appeared, shooting Jeffrey with the gun that Ryan had thrown away earlier. However, April still held a deep grudge, pointing her weapon at Ryan, determined to finish him off. She blamed Ryan for all the problems in her life. If only he hadn't invited Kevin to rob that night, Kevin would still be alive, and her life wouldn't have ruined. At the crucial moment, Kate appeared, attempting to persuade April. But April remained unwavering in her determination to eliminate Ryan. Ryan didn't contest the accusations and he admitted everything with deep remorse, his eyes closed, and he braced himself for the impending bullet. However, Ryan's confession eventually touched April's heart. Kate quickly approached her, embracing her. Kate promised April that she would take care of her as if she were her own sister. Shortly afterward, the police arrived to handle the situation. April was taken into custody and escorted to the police station to be held accountable for her actions. Meanwhile, Ryan was hailed as a hero for exposing the corrupt police syndicate. The following day at the police department, Kate received a promotion to the rank of lieutenant as recognition of her bravery. Later that evening, Lindsay participated in a piano competition, and Ryan and Kate attended as supportive parents, cheering her on. Seeing her parents holding hands, united in affection, Lindsay played the piano with calm passion. 
Moral lesson from the story, when someone offers you a map to a treasure, it's better to say no and keep your hands clean. Because in the end, that treasure might just be trouble you don't want.